EU today. I want to talk in depth about charging the Nomad from a DC-DC in-vehicle situation. The reason I want to cover it off quite slowly, and uh, for me that's uh, quite a challenge, is that we get a lot of questions about can you do this, this, that, and the other from the vehicle. And again, typically it's someone who's taken the unit and never read the instructions. The instructions are very clear what you can and can't do, and what's the best method, best method of charging the Nomad PDU. We've got a 5 and 10 amp SIGA DC, which is a typical grab and go. It's very much something you use the auxiliary SIGA socket in the car as your dual battery setup. So all the wiring is already done for you. So what you would do is you take the SIGA DC, which is out of one of these here, looks like this, one and a half meters of cabling with a 5 or 10 amp voltage stabilizer on the outside here. And what you do is you plug this into the unit, into the regular input, and then you plug this into your SIGA socket. So depending on the rating of your car, so if you've got a 10 amp SIGA socket in your vehicle, you should only use the 5 amp. The reason is, quite simply, is that you do not want to push your SIGA socket to 110%. You will end up burning it out and give yourself some problems. So the 5 amp you can run in a 10 amp SIGA socket in a vehicle, and then you've got the 10 amp, which you can quite happily run into a 15 amp or 20 amp SIGA socket. Now that would typically be in some of the four drives like a Ranger and an Amarok and a few of these other vehicles that have 15 rated or 20 amp rated sticker sockets. Now please check those and if you're not sure, you need to probably run a, a test or get an um, oil electrician to have a look at it. Because a lot of times people have messed around with wiring, especially for a second hand vehicle. But if you go with the, the 5 amp, the 5 amp typically they don't make anything typically less than the 10 amp sticker socket, you'll be okay. You can go full dual at the bottom here, all the cabling, including the module, uh, 10 and 20 amp options. You want to run a fuel, uh, full dual, and that's your traditional full dual guide. You can run that, that's a 20 amp module there. That was a 5 and 10, they're actually the same size. The internals are different anyway. So the 5 and 10, sorry, the 5 and 10 is a sticker socket. The 10s and 20s you get in full dual. You've got to remember to add a VSR, voltage sensitive relay, to those units down there, which it does not include. And that's if you're worried about the, uh, the units still pulling current when the cars stop. A lot of people actually disconnect the unit when they stop, but if you're worried about it and you want to leave it, if you want to connect it all the time, get a voltage sensitive relay, talk to your oil electrician, or you can get a VSR, low voltage cutout. That just means that when your uh, voltage from your crank battery gets down to a certain point, like 13 volt, it'll disconnect the current running through to the Nomad. So that's the five, the 10 SIGA plug and play, or a SIGA DC, really simple, pull the unit out, move the vehicle to vehicle. Full dual setups, yes, you can do. There's two options. There's a 10 and 20, and that's four options so far. The fifth option is the old option, which is you can use an inverter like this, 150 watt, don't, and plug it into your car, car sticker socket, and then take the 240 volt charger that you get with the unit, plug that into your inverter, <coughs> plug that into your regular input, the Nomad or Charger 8 amp. It's not a permanent solution, wouldn't leave it running 24 seven and just leave it running continually. The inverter will eventually burn out. It's got a little fan in there and that will eventually burn out. It's not a permanent situation, it's not a permanent solution. So with the Nomad, the five ways to charge it, the four permanent ways, the five and the tens, as long as you adhere to the sicker socket rating of your vehicle and don't push the limit, the tens and twenties down there, but add a VSR uh, if you are worried about the uh, unit still being connected with the cars off and you haven't got a VSR and you don't think you'll be able to disconnect it. If you have a BC, DC, DC, DC of your own, and you're wondering whether it'll work with the unit, again, we can't test every single unit on the market. However, if it's got the profile, and it's less than 20 amp, then typically they work no problems. You have to be careful when there's a DC or BC, DC that is rated at 25 amp. Typically, they'll charge a 25 plus amp, and this is not an approximation. It's 25 amp or less. You charge it at over 25, the unit will shut down. It'll need to be reset by a draw of over one amp, which is the way I've got the set up now. I've got a fridge plugged into it. If I was to whack 27 amp into this unit here, the red light from charging would go off, and then the fridge would pull the current, it would go back to reset, the charge light will go back on, it'll keep doing it, but eventually you will kill the unit, the BMS will fail. You just can't keep on hitting it with the ratings over than what it's rated for. The simple solution to this is read the instructions. It covers this in the instructions. It also covers resetting an overcharge and resetting dead shorts. It's all in the instructions. And these are the most common questions we get is how to reset it because I've over, overcharged, how to reset on dead short. They're actually in the instructions in the unit as they are. So read the instructions, you'll probably answer most of your questions before you come to us. 
But if you do have any specific questions about how to use it and uh, you know the current situation you have when you're out camping, send us an email to contact at nomadpedu.com.au and we'll come back to you with a tutorial that's specific to your need. But we'll also bring into the, I guess, into the realm other people's questions they have because everyone's got the same kind of questions and we'll try to cover off in one go and uh, hopefully then we can cover it off. And then you won't have any problems with the units. If you follow the instructions, the simplest thing, follow the instructions, you never have an issue. Um, so any questions, contact at nomadpedia.com.au and our website is nomadpedia.com.au. If you uh, want to subscribe to our uh, YouTube, then by all means do so. Um, or what's on our website. So hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, anyway, happy camping. Ciao.